In this video, we are going to discuss the causes, clinical signs, diagnostics, treatment, and prognosis of diabetes mellitus in cats. Feline diabetes mellitus occurs when the pancreas gland does not produce enough insulin. Insulin is the hormone that allows many tissues of the body to utilize glucose. As insulin levels fail, it becomes elevated, producing many adverse side effects in the body. The most common cause of diabetes mellitus in cats is the destruction of beta cells in the pancreas. Beta cells are responsible for insulin production. This destruction of beta cells often arises from chronic inflammation of the pancreas. This type of diabetes is known as type 1 diabetes mellitus. Type 2 diabetes, which arises either from the development of resistance to insulin or from a decreased action of insulin within the body, is uncommon in cats. Diabetes mellitus affects many different breeds and types of cats. The disease is most often seen in neutered male cats, 10 years of age or older. The common clinical signs include increased thirst and urination, increased appetite, and weight loss. Because glucose cannot be utilized by the body, it is almost as if the cat is starving in the midst of plenty. Some cats are also lethargic and weak and may walk with the hocks of their hind legs dropped to the floor. This specific clinical sign is known as the plantigrade stance. Diabetes mellitus is diagnosed when the fasting levels of blood glucose concentration is significantly elevated. Cats that are stressed have the ability to temporarily raise their blood glucose to levels about normal, so repeated blood glucose tests and the testing of urination for the presence of glucose may be needed to confirm the disease. Additional tests are often indicated to look for other diseases such as urinary tract infection or fatty infiltration of the liver that may accompany diabetes mellitus. Such tests include a complete blood count, biochemical profile, urinalysis, urine culture, and abdominal radiographs. Because older cats are also prone to hyperthyroidism, a thyroid test may also be submitted. Serum fructosamine levels can provide us with an average of blood glucose concentration during the period of 7 to 14 days before the blood sample was taken but this test is more used in monitoring response to insulin than as a diagnostic test. Cats with type 2 diabetes or very mild type 1 diabetes mellitus may respond to glipizide, an oral medication that lowers blood glucose. Most cats, however, require injections of insulin to control their disease. Several forms of insulin are available, and each has different duration of action. Protamine zinc insulin, which is also known as PZI, can be given once or twice daily. This product is most available via compounding pharmacies. Glargine, also known as Lantus, is sustained release insulin, which can be used in a once or twice daily schedule. The best success rate of treatment seems to be obtained with a twice daily protocol. Porcine insulin zinc suspension, also known in the United States as Vetsulin, is given to cats in 12 hour intervals. Other insulin products routinely used by veterinarians are NPH insulin, Humulin R, and Detimer. Some investigations have shown beneficial effects in normal and diabetic cats, supplemented with chromium and vanadium, but the role of these compounds in the management of feline diabetes mellitus remains to be determined. In normal, non-obese cats, chromium supplementation improves fasting glucose and glucose tolerance, but does not alter insulin concentrations. However, in other studies, chromium supplementation has no effects on glucose tolerance tests in obese and non-obese cats. Vanadium is thought to decrease insulin resistance and enhance glucose utilization via direct actions to enhance the activity of insulin signaling pathways. Although the exact mechanism of action is not known, vanadium supplementation is generally well tolerated by cats and beneficial effects on glycemic control have been reported. Although an eventual role may be found for these compounds, the current knowledge does not allow for a general recommendation for their use in diabetic cats to be made. In addition to insulin, the diet may be changed to a low-fat, high-fiber type of diet that contains complex carbohydrates. Several of these diets are available by prescription. Although it is difficult to train cats to eat meals, it is best if they eat around the time the insulin injection is given. Diabetic cats can be difficult to monitor at home because the collection of their urine can be tricky. They often eat throughout the day and they become stressed and may not eat when hospitalized. Most monitoring is done by checking the level of glucose in small blood samples. Samples may be taken by your veterinarian at specific times during the day or throughout the day 
over a period of time. Monitoring may also be done at home in some instances if the owner is able to take blood samples from the cat and use a glucose meter designed for use in diabetic people. Thanks to advances in technology, we can also use continued blood glucose monitoring devices as per example in the Libra system. It is important for the veterinarian and the cat owner to work closely in establishing the best method of monitoring blood and urine glucose while the cat is in insulin therapy. The prognosis for many cats with diabetes mellitus is good, as long as the disease can be regulated with medications and diets and other ancillary problems can be controlled or resolved. Successful treatment of this disease requires that the owner learns to give insulin injections, become familiar with the signs of insulin overdose and underdose, and learn how to adjust insulin doses. With the dedication on the part of the owner, many diabetic cats live active, normal lives for many years. If you like this video, please don't forget to subscribe to our channel. By subscribing to our channel, you are helping us to train the veterinarians of the future.